Wait! To understand how I ended up in this scenario, we've got to go back to... Oops! Too much! Oh yes, this. That's when it struck me. What exactly am I paying for? As I embarked on my commute, I started questioning everything. Like who determines the fares? And what affects the fares? So, here it is. Your Singapore Public Transport Fare explained. The first thing I looked into was why public transport fares are always increasing. Turns out, I was wrong. There are fare reductions too. Really? Yeah, like between 2015 to 2017. Fares are reviewed by PTC annually and train operators submit their application for fare adjustment to the council. Which decides the final fare adjustment based on various factors. But how do we ensure the fares remain affordable, right? PTC monitors fare affordability trends for two main income groups. The second quintile group which represents the average public transport user, and the second decile income group, which represents lower income households. Do you know more than 50% of Singaporeans enjoy concessionary fares, including students and senior citizens? There is also the Workfare Transport Concession Card, which enables Workfare Income Supplement recipients between 35 and 60 years old to enjoy up to 25% off adult fares. During years where fares are increased, eligible households in need of assistance can also apply for public transport vouchers to help them offset the transport costs. So now that we've got the basics covered, it's time to find out how our public transport fares are set. Our public transport system adopts an integrated distance fare structure. So say if you stay at Buena Vista, and you are visiting a friend at Woodlands, you can go by any possible rail route. Like this, or this, and this. If you love train hopping, this will allow train commuters to always pay the lowest fare possible by distance. But what determines how public transport fares are adjusted? Doors are closing. PTC uses a fare formula that guides the maximum allowable fare adjustment. It's made up of these five components. The Core Consumer Price Index tracks inflation. The Wage Index tracks the annual wage growth of workers in Singapore. The Energy Index is a composite index which tracks changes in diesel costs and electricity tariffs which is why fares fell between 2015 and 2017, when global oil prices plunged. The productivity extraction factor allows operators' productivity gains to be shared with commuters. A win-win for all. Lastly, the network capacity factor, which tracks the cost movements due to public transport capacity changes and commuter demands. If this looks complicated to you, you're not alone. Let me break it down. There are two factors affecting NCF, public transport network capacity and ridership. For example, a higher NCF could be due to more public transport services to serve the same number of commuters as before, which means less crowded journeys. But why do we need this? So, between 2012 and 2016, more than 1,000 buses and 200 trains were added to increase public transport capacity, which increased the annual operating costs substantially. With NCF, the costs of providing convenient and efficient public transport can be spread more evenly among everyone, which means a sustainable public transport model with higher frequency of trains and buses and less crowded journeys for commuters. Together, these five indicators ensure that the formula is nimble to industry cost changes. The formula sets the maximum fare adjustment quantum. But actual adjustments don't always reflect the quanta yielded by the formula. 
In 2020, the council decided not to adjust fares due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 4.4% fare quantum for 2020 was rolled over to 2021. I've been wondering, why should the commuters be the ones paying for the fare increase? Yeah, why can't the government subsidise? Then, I found this 2019 article which provided this breakdown. Every $1 of operating cost in rail operations is split like this. For the public transport system, the rail operators are facing rising cost pressures. While they continue to pursue non-fair revenue like advertising and rentals, it actually covers less than one-tenth of the operating costs. The government also provides about $1 billion worth of subsidies annually to ensure that public bus services are running smoothly and efficiently. Ultimately, it's a balancing act between keeping fares affordable and ensuring the financial viability of the public transport system. So my... Wait! Wait! So my day was different, all because my Easling card was shot by a little bit which made me miss the earlier trains, and as a result, my bus. That, or I could've taken my IPPT seriously, or run faster, I guess. But at least I got to learn more about the public transport fares, which I hope you did too. More importantly, I won't be late. <laughs> <laughs>